Idols have been a part of anime history for a long time. Some are groundbreakers, some are trend makers, and they all can sing. <laughs> the idol genre has a long history going back to the 1970s. So, it will be a while before we reach recent hits like Love Live. My qualifications for what is going in this miniseries is that being an idol must be most of the main story of the show and as part of the main conflict 90% of the time. Some are hybrid idol shows that have other parts of the plot, such as AKB0048 or Creamy Mommy, but being an idol is the integral part. In short, an anime can't just have an idol character and be an idol anime. The idol is the anime. Because of that, I'm not counting Macross. Yes, yes, it has a significance in the history of idol anime. But it is a sci-fi mecha anime series first, and it just has idol elements. The idols of Macross are loved and recognized, but their series aren't idol shows. However, I do really, really recommend trying Macross. My personal favorite is SDF Macross, and the compilation movie version, Do You Remember Love, is one of my favorite films. If you're not big on watching anime from before you were born, try Macross Frontier. Really cool. Also, banned anime does not count. I love things like Nana, and Beck, and Kayon. Show by Rock, no. Just no. But those aren't idols. There is a big difference between idols and bands. Think In Sync versus Detroit Metal City. Okay, if you're too young for that reference, think One Direction versus Detroit Metal City. With all that said, I hope you enjoy the idols of anime. The year is 1971. The word idol, idaru, as you may hear it in anime, was already in the Japanese lexicon thanks to the hit film, and I might mispronounce this, Cherche l'idol, a French film brought to Japan in 1964. That brought the singing of Sylvie Vartan to Japan, and a boom of her music followed. La plus belle pour aller danser. Star Tanjo, a talent show that discovered and made famous Pink Lady, started in October 1971. This was all before the golden age of idols, where what we think of as idols started. In April 1971, an anime called Sasurai no Taiyo started. In English, it is translated as Wandering Sun. Wandering Sun's place in anime history is that it's the first to be about the music industry. Its importance is also in the people behind the scenes. Yoshiyuki Tamino, creator of Mobile Suit Gundam, worked on this as a storyboard artist. Yoshikasu Yashuhiko did the character designs for Mobile Suit Gundam. Before Gundam, they both storyboarded another legendary show, Space Battleship Yamato, aka Star Blazers. Lastly, Michiko Hirai was the voice of Little Witch Sally, the first Magical Girl series. Wandering Sun helped set up a few of the tropes you see in idol anime today. Rivals, music sequences, and dreams that make up the story. The main character, Nozomi Mine, was voiced by Junko Fujiyama, who had a singing career and was using the anime to help promote her work. <laughs> A 
A summary from Anime News Network says, Two baby girls were born in the same hospital. One of them is the daughter of an aristocratic family, while the other belongs to a depraved household which lives in the slums of the city. However, the nurse in charge, Michiko, secretly switches the babies due to a personal grudge, resulting in a change of fate for the girls. Many years later, the lives of the two girls continue to be intertwined with each other, with the rich Mickey ill-treating the poor Nozomi. Yet both of them hold similar dreams to become a singer. I read other descriptions online, mostly translated from Italian sites, because there's no way to watch this. There's no fan subs, and there's no American official release. It's apparently based on a manga, but I can't find it online, raw or scanlated. Luckily, there's a bunch of clips available on YouTube, and if you speak Italian, you can watch it under the title Jane e Michi. If you speak French, you can watch it under the title Natalie et ses amis. Sasurai no Tayo, aka Wandering Sun, is a forgotten title that actually has a secret legacy to it. Seven years later, the music world has changed. Of course. It was the height of the 70s. It was the time of disco. And it was the rise of Pink Lady. The premise of the series was the history of Nemoto Mitsuo, aka Mie, and Masuda Keiko, aka K, of Pink Lady. The story was about the time when they were kids to high schoolers to superstars. However, I have to note that they did not play the characters in the anime. Instead, Junko Hori voiced Kei and Michiko Nomura voiced Mie. Also, the openings and endings were done by Young Fresh. It's not the only case of an idol in a show being voiced by someone other than the one singing. The episode with Idol Densetsu Eriko will go more into that. I'm not just calling them superstars for no reason. They had 9 number 1 hits on the Oricon charts in the late 70s with millions of sales. They crossed over to the American Billboard charts with Kiss in the Dark charting at number 37. They even had a show in the U.S. with Jeff Altman. I thought you didn't want to get in, Jeff. Well, you're not always right. You know, sometimes uh, I get a little spot here on my tux, and uh, hot tub water seems to just take it out just right. I don't see any spot. Oh, you don't. Well, <laughs> thanks so much. Yeah, we got a little ah! spot here. Yeah. Oh, isn't that nice? Yep. You need a little hot tub water sometime. Come on, girls, what do you say? We just go right on in. Make room for Jeffy, baby. Oh, delightful, delightful. Just keep that up. Yeah. However, it's not all as happy as it seems. They made a huge mistake by not being on the Kohaku Uta Gassen. It's the New Year's Eve tradition on NHK, by invitation only and for those in the music industry. Of Japan, of course. Being invited is a huge honor and is considered important to your career since it has so many viewers. But they declined and decided to make their own New Year special with Blackjack and Hookers, and it failed. Their whole crossover to America was due to their decline in sales in Japan, and they wanted to focus on the American market. They got a hit, but they also made one of the worst variety shows ever. And since variety shows were dying off on TV anyway, this was the nail in the coffin. It didn't help that they couldn't do the comedic parts as well because of the language barrier, and they didn't sing their original songs. They mostly sung US disco tunes. You can surprisingly buy this show on DVD, but at what cost? Since they were in America, their appearances in Japan diminished, and so did their star power. And that and disco died. Forever. May it live on as dust from Disco Demolition Night. Pink Lady disbanded in 1981 and reunited a few times since. Before you scoff at the fact that they had an anime at all, remember, there was an MC Hammer cartoon. Bro, he was given magical shoes from a hip-hop Motown dude! Can't make fun of it, America. 
Pink Lady Monogatari aired during the peak of their career, while songs like Zipangu and Chameleon Army was in the top five of the charts. If you're wondering, where the clip's at? Well, what little I could find was the opening and ending, and a fan site with lots of screen caps. Pink Lady has a place in US and Japanese pop culture, whether you like it or not. <laughs> There is something to keep in mind before we stop talking about disco. Remember Disco Duck? Look at me. I'm the disco duck. Why did I mention Disco Duck? Disco Duck was a hit from 1976. It is one of the worst songs of the 70s, but I'm only using it as a frame of reference because there's a Japanese equivalent in dumb hit novelty songs. The anime was inspired by a novelty disco song called The Sukat Song, which became popular in 1979. It was sung by Yayoi Suryoka, who then voiced the character in the anime. The song was also used as the ending. Although I found this, which may be a B-side or something. <laughs> It uses an actual cat in the song. Uh... The scriptwriter and creator of the anime was Tsunehisa Ito. This is his second idol anime work. The first? Well, it was the first. Sasurai no Taiyo from part one. The year is now 1980. The old ways in the music world are changing as TV became more important than just touring for an idol's success. Star Tanjo was continuing its influence by creating stars. Keio Kyoku, which means pop tune, was giving way to what we know as J-pop. Dentsu created CM idols, who did commercials and ads, and singing was just another part of a multimedia product. Momoe Yamaguchi retired this year, announcing her engagement, releasing her last album, and performing a farewell concert at the Budokan. Seiko Matsuda was beginning her long career. This is the time the golden age of idols began. Sukat aired from April 1980 to December 1980. A summary of Sukat according to the anime encyclopedia is, Su is a suburban Tokyo cat who enjoys climbing up on the roof to scat sing, beating out the rhythm with her tail hoping that one day she'll become a star singer just like human vocalists on TV. She talks her way onto the set of the NTV talent show, Who's the Star?, and becomes an overnight celebrity, soon forgetting all about her past life. As her life becomes a whirl of music hits, recording contracts, and product endorsements, she begins to wonder if she has sacrificed her personal life for stardom. As she reminisces about her happy kittenhood, she is found by her sisters Lon and Mickey, who convince her to return home to obscurity. But I found other descriptions such as this one on Simco. After an accident, the amnesiac Sue was taken in to live with the Tarao family. She always had the urge to become a singer, but didn't know why. As it turned out, Sue was actually part of a band formed with her two twin sisters. But Sue's climb to the top of the charts is a long and hard way. So, I went to the Japanese Wikipedia for the truth. After a Google translation, I got this. Girl Sue, who lost memory by accident, decided to become a professional singer for Reunited with Discreet Family. To proceed with Famous as a singer, Two will also expose your opportunity to the TV. It is because I thought that might also tour of seeing my mother and my sisters. 
and you have become various difficulties. Finally, Sue played a reunion of the Sisters of Orchids and Mickey. Then Sue's start a formed a trio of sisters and Sue Cat activities. But... Uh, so I think we got a complete story with all of that. I think. Otherwise, all that exists are DVD box art and some clips on Nico Nico Doga. There's no official release in the US and it hasn't been fan subbed. I feel like this should have been snatched up and shown on Nick Jr. in the 80s when they brought over the little bits and Maya the Bee. Also, what I can say is that the character designs are cute. Who doesn't like cats? It's the internet. Even if this anime sucks, someone's gonna like it because it's a cat. Next time we finally talk about something I've seen in entirety, and you can too, with actual subtitles. Magical Angel, Creamy Mommy.